In the previous video, we found the vertex axis of symmetry and intercepts for f of x. Now in this video, I'm going to do the same for g of x. This video is for Nova Online Math 161, and we are preparing for the final exam. So let me copy the g of x, the second type of quadratic, and I actually want to copy the direction too, okay? All those things that we have to find about this function. So g of x is negative x squared minus 4x plus 5. First thing they want is the vertex. So let's write the vertex formula. x equals negative b over 2a. Um, b is negative 4. So if I put negative negative 4, that will be positive 4 on the numerator. In the denominator, I'm going to have 2 times the, x, uh, the a value of negative 1. So the x coordinate of the vertex turns into 2, 4 divided by negative 2, which is negative 2. Now, let's go find the y value. To find the corresponding y value, just plug in that x that we just found into the function. So we will get negative, negative 2 squared, minus 4 times negative 2, plus 5. I will use my scientific calculator to evaluate that. And you can use your scientific calculator on your exam to evaluate, okay? All right, so negative, negative 2 squared minus 4 times negative 2 plus 5. The vertex is way up at 9, okay? So let's write the order pair for vertex now. I'm going to zoom out and say, that the vertex of this parabola is negative 2 comma 9. Now remember, axis of symmetry is always the x-coordinate of the vertex. So axis of symmetry is x equals what's the x value? Negative 2. So we found two parts already. The vertex is at negative 2, 9. The axis of symmetry is x equals negative 2. Now we got to go find the intercepts now. Let's do y-intercept first. If you want to find the y-intercept, you have to stay on the y-axis, right? It has to be on the y-axis. And to be on the y-axis, the x-coordinate must be 0. You don't go to the right or you don't go to the left to stay on the y-axis. So to find the y-intercept, plug in x equals 0. So we'll get negative 0 squared minus 4 times 0 plus 5. Now the first two terms will turn into 0, leaving us with just 5. Therefore, the y-intercept is 0, 5. Now let's find the x-intercept finally, okay? So to find x-intercept, you set the y equal to 0 or the entire function equal to 0. So you do want to set 0 equals the entire quadratic. I'm going to try to find the zeros of this quadratic. So let's see if we can factor this. I always try to factor it first. If it's, if it's not factorable, then I try to look into the quadratic formula. But uh, we never know. Let's try it. Let's see if it will factor. I'm going to factor out the negative. Okay. When the leading term is negative, just factor it out. All the terms will now change to the opposite sign inside this parenthesis. So negative x squared is positive x squared. But subtracting 4 is now adding 4, adding 4x. And this adding 5 is now going to turn into minus 5 because we divided all terms by negative 1 to factor it out to the front. Now let's see if that trinomial is factorable, okay? Two numbers that multiplies to be 5. Um, 5 times 1 is 5, but if I make the 5 a positive and 1 a negative, they will not only multiply and give you negative 5, but they will also add up to positive 4. So this one was factorable. So let's get those x-intercept. This graph will have an x-intercept at x equals negative 5, and the second x-intercept at x equals positive 1. 
So unlike the first example, f of x that we went over, g of x actually has two x-intercepts. Let's think about this though, okay? So this graph, um, if I just try to sketch a picture real quick, um, will go two to the left, but up nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it was way up there. But look at the leading coefficient sign. This is a negative quadratic, which means we're going to have a graph that's going down, downward. So, you know, my, my picture is probably all, is not really drawn to scale here, but, or is, but you know, it's going to go down and eventually touch the x-axis, right? So what we are saying is that it's going to touch the x-axis at negative 5 and positive 1. So if I can try to fix this picture a little bit better, I can try to plot the 1. And I can plot 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And, you know, we even know what the y-intercept is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we can actually graph this quadratic because we know so much about this quadratic function now. We found the vertex axis of symmetry, x-intercepts, and y-intercepts. But the reading the direction of this example, find the vertex, axis of symmetry, and intercepts, I don't think the goal was to graph, okay? But I just wanted to show you, even though we started way up high here for the vertex, because the graph was going downward, it touched the x and x axis on those two spots. So that kind of, you know, makes sense that we found two x-intercepts algebraically here, okay? So we, we went over two separate examples because they were, I think, very different, okay? The first case, we didn't have any x-intercept because when the graph went down, it didn't go up to touch the x-axis at all. And we were able to confirm by finding the negative discriminant, okay? But the second case, I was able to factor it out and solve for x-intercepts algebraically. And we can tell if you do the discriminant, we would have gotten a positive number there.